Staging is a broad term that is used in the entertainment industry to describe an idea or to set up a story world to tell a story or just to convey the overall aesthetic of a body of work. It's one of the most oldest and the most general of all principle because it intertwined with so many other aspects within the entertainment industry. In animation, it's one of the most general of all principle because it also covers other areas in animation such as acting, timing, camera angle, and settings. I say it's one of the most oldest principle in entertainment industry because it derives from theater, one of the most oldest form of entertainment, where actors, sets, and props are carefully placed on stage, hence the word staging. In Ollie Johnston and Frank Thomas's Illusion of Life, staging is the presentation of any idea so that is completely and unmistakably clear. And in live action stop motion, this also means what you choose to include in the frame and tell your story and how you direct the viewer's attention to tell that story. In essence, you're communicating to your audience, look at this, and now look at this, now back at this. The aim of staging is to gain control of the viewer's attention. Here is an example of how this control is lost with bad staging. In this example, all of the elements are competing for stage presence, all at the same time, which makes all of the actions unclear and leaving the viewer confused as they won't know what to look at. You can avoid this by narrowing down the focus of the scene or moment and have one clear action at a time, instead of many simultaneous actions. The background should also not distract the viewer's attention with a lot of details, especially if it's unnecessary. The camera also plays an important role in staging as well. It is, after all, what the audience or viewer will see. As a general rule, small action and expression should be kept in a tighter or a more close-up shot so the viewer can see the action clearly, whereas bigger action should be framed further or in a wider shot. You can also plan your shot accordingly to what you want to show the viewer. In this wide shot, you can demonstrate the impact coming from a smaller gun relative to the scale of the target. Or does this scene require a master shot closing into the subject to highlight the character's dominance? All of this needs to be considered to stage an effective scene as you tell the story. You could also take a step further by applying the fundamental concept in filmmaking, which is mise en scène. This is a French term that means placing on stage. It is the process of what to include in the scene and where it should go on the stage. Let me use an example of a video from the channel, a day in life of a stop motion figure. In this shot, a wide angle is used so that we can see the characters, the props that's used in making these videos and the settings. From how this shot is staged, the blocking and composition doesn't just show who has power, but also the sense of scale. And because they are not introduced sporadically, this allows you, the viewer, to register everything on screen. And since the easiest way to direct viewers' attention is movement, the main character walking drives the story forward. Now, how can you use the principle of staging and maintaining the control of viewers' attention? This is a skill that does take a bit of practice, especially if you are not used to interpreting art. And the most obvious way to learn staging is by watching your favorite show or any particular scene that stays with you the most. Notice what they do and how they stage everything and if you can apply similar elements or technique in your own work. Having a storyboard does help visualize what the viewer will see and help you stage the scene more clearly. If you're not starting from a storyboard or just testing out ideas, do a test shot. Try different camera angles. See which fits best, maybe a different lighting, or switching sets or props, maybe that helps drive your point across better. You can learn a lot from this exercise even if it's just a still image. This could tell you what to include or just as importantly, what not to include so that the action or scene is unmistakably clear. Additionally, if you have a timer or a stopwatch during your test shot, this could also help you with timing, knowing where to pause and pace your video better. And that's it. I hope you found this useful. And as always, if you enjoyed this, remember to drop a like and get subscribed and ring the notification for when the next one drop. Take care and I'll see you next time.